little short for a stormtrooper. Welcome to the Contingency Plan Podcast. My name is Jedi Master David, and with me as always is Darth Austin. Hello, everyone. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the All Will Row Hood Podcast. Are we making ice cream? Yeah, by God, we're making ice cream. What flavor? Chocolate. That's a dark side flavor. Hey, man. If it is, it is. We're we're making chocolate tonight. I'm excited. I'll go get my ice cream maker. <laughs> Yes, everyone know we are we are not that that kind of podcast. This is a Star Wars reread podcast. We are still in the New Jedi Order series of books, looking at Vector Prime, coming up on chapter fourteen, titled "Closer, Closer, Yuck, Car Closer, Closer, Come Closer." Oh goodness! Yes, an interesting chapter title for a long chapter yeah it actually was it was a lot longer than uh than i think any of the ones we've we've previously read to this point yeah this is what a 27 page chapter Uh, i don't know about that it's it's definitely long probably in more like the you know 15 ish range but it was long let me put it to you that way uh quite a bit of meat on the bone here We're, we're gonna definitely discuss uh two points of view and uh, yeah, it should be fun. So, but let's let's start off with a little little Jedi Council. How you been this week? Not good. Been working on the truck all week. With all the free time I have, you know, all two hours a night before it gets too dark to work on it. Yeah, seriously, we're uh, we're definitely hitting hitting our fall season here in Ohio. Um, Got to wake up early so you can actually get things done. <laughs> yeah, seeing a lot less lot less sunlight. It's kind of depressing. Honestly, we were. Used to having the sun go down at my god like, ten nine thirty <laughs> well yeah at night <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it was work. actually already getting dark when I was on my way home from work at six o'clock today yep yeah it was uh it, it is what it is I mean we're in Ohio our seasons change with the you know snap of a finger and uh <laughs> It'd be sixty and sunny tomorrow well and that's the thing last week we actually had a few days where it was still reaching the seventies and then. It would plummet down, and and uh, this morning, uh, at least by the little thermometer in my truck, it said it was uh, thirty five. Yeah, I actually had to uh, defrost the windshield this morning going to work. Well, see, it's it's kind of funny if I park my if I back my truck into my normal spot, I normally don't have to worry about that. But if I have to pull in, mm-hmm. I, it will. It'll frost up a little bit. Really, it's just a direction. It's it's hmm. kind of weird. But uh, but no, it was it was definitely cold. Cold this morning, so just got to get ready for it. You never know. We could get done. I don't know. I don't remember last winter being all that crazy bad. We had like one bad snowstorm. I know I, well, I still had the Mustang at the time, and I was <laughs> yeah, stupid and right. tried to drive in Granville in it during the storm and ended up in a ditch all night. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Of course, uh, yeah, speaking of ditches, on my way down here today was like the worst drive down. Um, I, I got a little bit later start than what I wanted to. Uh, I had to, you know, do a few things. I was actually a little bit late at work, and then I had to do a few things and um, come home and pack up all the equipment and bring it down. So I get I get motoring down and uh, moving pretty good, and then all of a sudden I see a, you know, a relatively new. F-150 uh, nosedived in a ditch, and there's the cop car, and here comes the wrecker, and, you know, it's one of them flatbed rigs, so he's, uh, <laughs> it's a big rig, too. I mean, mm-hmm. he's, he's like, trying to, you know, get it lined up to get this truck out of the ditch. He's got his winch on it. He's raking the thing up. The wheels are locked, you know, in the wrong position, you know, and it's kind of going around, but the guy did a pretty good job. It only, t- it didn't take him very long to get the thing out, and you know, he got it like halfway up on the bed and then just kind of moved out of everybody's way and then fixed it from there. <laughs> so, but at the same time, you're probably glaring at them. No, not the really. I was time. I was actually just kind of watching him. I was like, good job, man. Good, good job, whatever's towing. You, you, you got it. And then 
little fur. So I get past that a little further down. I wind up behind. Well, there's a, a turn, you know, stop sign and a turn and you turn left. And, um, I was a little bit late getting there because here comes a freaking caravan. Uh, there's a big old super duty, uh, with a, with a big, uh, uh camper attached to it. And, uh, pretty much for, eh, I don't know, I want to say about the uh, four or five miles driving 40, <laughs> and down the road I was going, it's, you can't really pass because it's, it's, a, it's a narrow two-lane and uh, there's hills and, and there's a lot of bad passing areas. And, and unfortunately, not but a week ago or two, there was a, there was a bad accident down, uh, down 229 where somebody had um, attempted to pass a truck and they hit somebody head on. So oh, geez. you, you kind of got to be careful around some of those, those routes that I take, but I mean, they're, they're the rural country roads that I take and you know, they're, they're fun to, fun to drive around, uh, you know, just normally and you don't have to worry about much traffic at, at, at a lot of the time. And then, you know, you don't have to worry about the cops. You can kind of, you know, do 90, but not really. I mean, until I'm, you run into an Amish buggy. Well, <laughs> there's that too. It's quite a bit of that around our neck of the woods and right. Yeah, for all of you people who don't know what it's like to ride behind an Amish buggy, screw Amish buggies. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, they they obviously they're they're trying to get around too, and times have certainly changed, and they've uh, they've definitely you know sequestered themselves in the past. But uh, yeah, an Amish buggy going uphill on on some of these roads that you can't pass and. Uh, it's, it's difficult. And of course, you know, around here and, and then like, you know, the Pennsylvania area and everything, um, you know, a lot of accidents involving Amish buggies, mm-hmm. but yeah, we just had one, what a month or two ago, uh, yeah. the person we send a lot of work to, to do, uh, boat covers, uh, someone in a big van was drunk and hit him, killed him and his son, I think. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. That wow. was a really bad wreck. Yeah, so you got to be careful out there on the roads. Here is your uh, weekly PSA from the Contingency Plan, plan the Contingency Say. Plan podcast. <laughs> be safe out there on the roads. Watch out for those shiny orange triangles because that means it's an Amish buggy. Oh goodness, yeah. And you'll come up on it really quick. Yeah, for Objects sure. Objects in mirror are closer than they appear. <laughs> but that would be for behind you. I understand. I'm just using get, that. Get just we come on closer man. than you appear. You'll come up on it closer, <laughs> closer, 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 closer. Quick, quicklier. Then you'll oh, relax. Goodness. So yeah, that was that's pretty much been the week. I'm I'm very happy to be off of work. I I was just done. <laughs> I was you done know, this on, week. <laughs> honestly, this week has been such a blur that when you said earlier, just a minute ago, that you work today, it's like, why don't you work on Saturday? <laughs> oh, it's not Saturday yet. Oh God, no. shoot me now. Yeah, it's, I it's, still have two days left. <laughs> still Friday as we're as we're uh, recording this podcast. A lot of times we do record on. Fridays and then drop the podcast on Monday mornings um, or Saturday or Sunday, just depending on yeah. when we can get together because that fluctuates. Sometimes you can come up to the house and, and then sometimes I come down here and just, you know. It, yeah, I have a Halloween party to go to tomorrow. So It's not even yeah. Halloween. Yeah, but for Halloween, I'll be camping this year, so I have to do it now. Spooky camping? Are you d- no, it's just spooky camping. No, just <laughs> glamping. Oh, God. <laughs> Which might be spooky for me. I don't know. It's going to be weird. It might be. It you got any Halloween plans this year? No. No, I don't. I'm not going to do a I don't, different thing. I don't really celebrate Halloween anymore like we used to. I mean, I watch scary movies, listen to some creepy stories while I'm at work on my phone, but I don't really get into the holiday anymore. I don't know. I was never really big into Halloween. I guess, you know, I, I liked, uh, you know, as a kid, you know, it was fun to do the dress up and... Uh, and uh, and go sure. out and trick or treating and weren't, th- weren't you Darth Maul one year I believe uh yeah, yeah. I think so yeah I was a vampire for several years mm-hmm. uh that was member of Kiss one year I think yep. yeah I'm pretty sure you're a Darth Maul one year yeah well I, I know I had the lightsaber let me put it to you that way I remember the lightsaber we <laughs> so, had that lightsaber for many years <laughs> yeah that's true so yeah no I, I think I think I, I I remember doing a Jedi one year, but anyway, I might have. Been, you know what? You might have been kissed that year, and I might have been Darth Maul. We'll I, have to, we'll have to kinda, ask Maul. To be honest, I, I was remember. I was kind of thinking. I was kind of thinking about that. I, I felt like you might have been Maul, and then one year I, I did a, a Qui Gon or something, and then might. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, we're we're nerds. It's fine. Yeah. But had no one anymore. had one year. Me and a few buddies. We did one of them was really tall, so we did Chewie, Han, and uh, Han, Hanny. It's Han. Han. 
Yeah. I'm Lando today. Lando. No, I didn't dress up as Lando. I was Luke, I believe. I can't remember. Eh. Didn't have anyone to play as Leia, but three was good enough. Yeah, now now we just do adult nerd stuff. I don't even know. Like even when I was in like college and stuff, I guess we went out to the bars on Halloween, but or, or something like that. But uh, yeah, there's always not, some house party anymore. for Halloween. I for, mean, for sure, for sure. It's 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 a little different now. Yeah. You know, well, you're you're not old. I, I'm getting old. <laughs> But um, it's, always, it's always the same night, and it's never on Halloween, too. I've been invited <laughs> like four on the same night, two weeks before Halloween. Yeah, it's, it's well, got, Why can't anyone have a party on Halloween? <laughs> I was about to say, when does Halloween fall? Because I think it falls. Oh, my goodness. This phone is so crappy. I think it's a, uh, hold on, let me check mine. Go well, yeah, okay, so for all of you who have iPhones and did the recent update, it just went, it, it made my phone go nuts, and like it, it offloaded a ton of apps, and now I can't access my calendar. For the love of God, it's a Wednesday this year. Okay, I th- so I thought it was during during the week, and I, I was like, you know, it, it's. I mean, honestly, that's fine for kids and everything, but obviously, right. when you're adults, you want to try and do it like something on the weekend. You yeah, know, you, when can't, you're not you can't have a party on a Wednesday. Yeah, it's it's not like you can you know go to the office the next day. You've got facial makeup still crusty, and you know you're hung over. And yeah, <laughs> still got bits of apple. I mean, do people still do that? Bobbing for apples on bobbing the Halloween party. For, dude, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know, man. I haven't You'll... done that in like 10, 15 years, I think. Yeah. Closer to 15, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 been a, it's been a long time since, since that sort of shenanigans. But, but anyway, let's go ahead and move on here. Uh, go into the Holonet. I did a little bit of inter- internet searching this week. so And it'll kind of tie into our intro a bit. And <laughs> Help it make sense. Yeah, for all I those mean, those of you who aren't diehard fans. Well, it, it was a pretty obscure reference. So, uh, Will Row Hood uh, was a basically not, not an extra. Wood. Wood. Yeah, I accidentally <laughs> we, we we had to redo the intro there because I I was just you know going in my normal. And I was like Will Row Wood. Oh wait, crap. We got we got to start over. It's well, good. if it makes you feel better, I didn't think you said it wrong. It's just the way you pronounce it. It's like he's not very sure of that. No, yeah, <laughs> I, I just I, I fumbled it. But anyway, a very obscure reference. There was um, essentially he was an extra um, on in the Empire Strikes Back. Uh, he was on one of the Star Destroyers, and then he was also on Cloud City, if I remember correctly. Now the tie into that is John Favreau had. Uh, Posted a couple pictures on uh, Twitter. Uh, one of them was of <laughs> the ice cream machine, uh, which is what what uh, what he carried in the in the scene. You just saw him in the background, just running with this ice cream machine, and it's like, oh, quick, we got to save the ice cream. <laughs> By the way, that ice cream machine, you guys can't see it, but the picture of it would be the great base to an R unit. <laughs> Yeah, astromech droid. <laughs> that, yeah, that, it does kind of look a little astromechy there. It's you know, a couple little little flip buttons on the top, and yeah, mm. I could see that. Uh, this obviously is not. It doesn't really look exactly like what it did in the in the movie, right? But anyway, um, so he posted that, so people are speculating that you know possibly in his new project, you know, I don't know, are we going to see the return? Uh, of of a mysterious extra, I don't know. Maybe he was just taking pictures of props because, well, here's a here's a neat one. So the second picture he posted was of this really sweet looking, uh, you know, blaster rifle. It kind of has like a little prong on the on the front. So I guess it could be kind of like you a could dual bayonet, basically. Well, yeah, I get <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I was thinking like like more like a taser or something. But yeah, I guess it could be like a dual bayonet too. Um, so, you know, again, dropping little hints here, obviously, you know, the Mandalorian is, is, uh, we're really kicking off some of the speculation and, and, uh, wondering about, you know, what that's going to be. And an old, uh, you know, John here is just, you know, posting pictures and giving little, little teasers. So that's, that's kind of fun. Clearly they're putting some of that $3 million budget into, uh, the props. Cause that is a nice rifle. That was, that was more than that one. It was like per ten, episode. Was it? Ten, it was, I thought it was like ten million per episode. Was it? That we talked much? about. I thought it was like, like three. Okay, well, it was a lot. Well, either I think way, it, was that, 10, but it is anyway. a nice looking prop. I'll give them that for yeah. sure. I'm down with that. Uh, and I would probably buy one if they put them up for sale. Sure. Honestly, yeah, it was kind of <laughs> cool. I, I would. Yeah, I could see that. A little obscure, but why not? Um, and let's see here. In the same article, uh, we also had a little bit of a small interview from Oscar Isaac, who was, of course, Poe. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was kind of talking about some of the, 
you know, being on set for episode nine with JJ. And he's kind of in here saying that, you know, it seems more relaxed. You know, like they seem more relaxed and seem more, uh, it's like we're able to try things a little bit now. It's not like a constant pressure to perform or or pressure to to deliver. Um, So honestly, I got to say, that's usually the way you want things because, it, you know, it allows the creative juices to flow and, you know, potentially if you're more relaxed, you're, you might give a better performance. But again, everybody reacts differently, so I don't know what you yeah. think about that. Who knows? He could be saying that and in reality, they're all just running around with chicken, <laughs> like chickens with their heads cut off. What are we going to do? How are we going to fix this area? It's true. <laughs> it's definitely true. I mean, it, you know, I, I think that they, they have a lot of work to do and uh, and there's a lot of... There's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of conjecture, and and we we definitely got to get this right. We For gotta, sure, they they have to get this movie right, or movies. <laughs> well, that's another topic. I still think it could easily be a two parter, but we'll just have to see. We should do a video on why it would make more sense to make it a two parter. Honestly, uh, we should do a well, lot of videos. I mean, on, <laughs> honestly, yeah, it's gonna be the running theme. They yeah. keep saying they're gonna do videos, and then they just read the book. Yeah, we'll we'll get into it eventually, but no. In in all seriousness, I mean, just the sheer amount of questions that need to be answered, I think you could easily do a two parter for sure, and just piss off the entire universe. Yeah, and do a time jump in between the two. Oh God, no! Uh, uh, no I just mean like a year. No, I just <laughs> I just think you, well, there's gonna have to be a time jump in the beginning. Oh well, in my opinion, there should be a time jump in the beginning of the movie to deal with the whole Leia. You know, unfortunately, yeah. Carrie, Carrie Fisher's death. Yeah. But you know, we'll see. I'll leave it up to JJ. I really did like The Force Awakens, so I think he'll do just fine. He just he has to imprint his vision here more. Uh, another part of here, this was kind of interesting. So the 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 Resistance series uh, might have a new uh, cast member. We should have saved some of this for next week's because this could be a dry week. You know, it's going to be. Well, we got we're, four new stories. Well, we're going. It's all in one article, so I'm just yeah. going for it. We'll figure out something for the next one, but. So we get potentially a new cast member at least for one episode. Elijah Wood, Frodo's coming I'm to the resistance. Excited for that. Frodo Baggins is coming coming to the uh, resistance, playing a pilot named Rucklin. I'm a fan, so I'm excited. Yeah. Any uh, yeah. news on what? I mean, like what kind of background the character has? Is it just that he's a pilot? Just a pilot. That's all. I, I didn't really look too deep into that right now, but no, I mean, just in the little blurb here, a uh, pilot named Rucklin. So should be kind of interesting. Elijah, obviously, you know, Lord of the Rings was huge. He's done mm-hmm. other projects as well. Um, but, you know, most people are going to think, you know, Frodo. Of course. Old Frodo Baggins. Yep, goes without saying. And he's, he's a great actor. So, I mean, if they make him a main character, I'd be happy. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I feel like at least by the judging by what they're saying in there, I feel like it, it'll probably be more, more complimentary, like a one-time deal. But I mean, you never yeah, know. It would be quite expensive. I mean, maybe. Yeah, they, maybe. It's not like they have the ten million dollar budget, like. Uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't really looked up what like the budget is for those, but yeah, it should be interesting. So, have we covered much on resistance yet? No, I, you know, we we might uh, that might be what we do next week because I really haven't know? researched it much, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I I'm a bit behind on on a lot of the other the other series and stuff. You know, I mean, to be honest with you, I I haven't really watched Clone Wars all the way through either. I watched so. quite a bit of Clone Wars growing up. Uh, I believe I was around, yeah, I want to say 13, 14 when it came out. So it was definitely... Is that old? It's an old one. Really? Yeah, it's very old. Yeah, that was just one of those things that I, I don't know. I mean, it's not that I didn't like it or anything. It's just I, I just never got into to watching it solidly. I've watched episodes, right. but I, I, I've, I've, just never, I've just never really watched it. And it's on Netflix still, I think, so... Yeah, until Disney, you know, makes God, you're, you're right. 2008 to 2014. Wow. Yeah, it's it's an wow. old one. Yeah. Dang. Okay. Well, you you got me there. You have better memory on that than I must have. So, but anyway, I was kind of hollowing that there. I think we uh, I think we covered that. Anything else you wanted to talk about before we dive into the reread? If we had anything else to talk about, we'd want to save it for next week. Because again, it's <laughs> yeah. you know some weeks have been really dry recently. There's so much speculation going around episode nine and all the TV series that it's hard to give good news stories. So well, that's true. And and you know we we're not really a news 
thing anyway. We're just we're just kind of yeah. here to here to bring what we find interesting. And I might kick your dog. <laughs> You, I, don't, you yeah, probably, I don't think you guys are picking that up. Yeah, the dog's you probably going can. crazy going over nuts. something. Yeah, that's, we got new cats. The the the, the vicious, the vicious, the very vi- ultra vicious dog attack Yorkie. Yeah, the attack Yorkie. The attack Yorkie. Oh my God, such a vicious dog. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So let's go ahead and pop into the reread. We obviously have a little bit longer chapter here, and uh, again, um, chapter fourteen, closer, closer. Yes. And just before we get started, make sure that if you haven't, uh, check out the Facebook page, hit the like button on there. If you'd like to add anything to the podcast or have any questions, comments, or theories, uh, you can uh, message us there and Darth Austin will take care of you. Or you can send uh, anything off to our uh, Gmail address, that's tcplanpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, if you're interested, you can also check out Patreon if you want to, you know, just help out the help out the uh, the old pirate ship the old millennium falcon here you know it's a little rusty it's it's got needs some repairs but now if you, if you want to support the uh podcast patreon's a good place to do it we have our dinner with the patron series uh on there and uh, you know as well as some potential other stuff for the future but that's sort of what we have up and i've got a couple backlogged episodes i need to uh edit and get up there as well but uh but again just uh you know gentle little little psa for you let's get in the chapter all right. Yep, because those Disney checks are running dry, and I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> we need to eat now. Oh, let's see here. So, in our in our last chapter, we had um, we had a little bit of uh, you know Han's Han's rescue. Well, Luke's rescue of Han, <laughs> and uh, we also had a little bit in here about. Um, wasn't this? Uh, I, I I sometimes a chapter. Yeah, okay. So it was the last chapter there that we well, the dozen and we had. Two. Yeah, the the dozen and two. Kip, uh, his little unit, um, going out there to investigate and uh, get in the first real contact with the Yuzen Vong. Uh, well, in this case, just the Coral Skippers, and uh, How'd they that were go for them. Well, they they got wrecked. Yeah, they got wrecked. Now Kip yeah. did escape, um, and. You know, now we're kind of continuing on here, and we are with Kip. <laughs> so well, we are with R five, technically R five L four. Yeah, for a very short amount of time. Who screeched and wailing painfully, sparks flying from its head. So you know, the the whole thing was is that the um, the Yuzen Vong let loose these little insect creatures to damage the ships, and you know, Kip went to hyperspace, but he still had the little creatures attached to his. To a ship, I think there were two, weren't there? There was like three. A, I believe there, there were three. three. Yep. I remember there was the flying one, and there was another one that he was trying to like crush between his uh, foils, and that wasn't couldn't. really working. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, basically, his ship is getting torn apart. Uh, his droid is is dead. You know, yeah. they they destroy the droid, um, and Kip's trying to get on his uh, his spacesuit. You know, to get some oxygen because one of these creatures is getting ready to go through the canopy. And uh, obviously that opens you up to the vacuum of space, and I don't think he's gonna, you know, quite Leia fly through the, you know, through the, the galaxy here. So he need, he needs to get on space. Yeah. What do you think? Well, before we go on, I did want to mention one little thing about uh, <laughs> something a lot of nerds would probably point out: uh, R five setting on getting set on fire, but then quickly. The fire was quenched because of the lack of oxygen. It's like, yeah. well, if there's no oxygen, it wouldn't have been set on fire at all. But okay. Hey, I don't know. What are you going to do? He saved it. He, <laughs> sa- he saved himself. God. <laughs> so, yeah, um, Kip does kind of dispatch a couple of these creatures with his lightsaber. Uh, there, was a, there was an interesting little part in here. I don't want to, like, jump too crazy far ahead. But, you know, he was – he had this feeling like, you know – in order for him to find his force, you know, his balance within the force, he really wants to have a hold of that lightsaber. Yeah. I thought that was kind of interesting, you know. Yeah. So it, it seems like kind of a kind of point of weakness there, but I mean, it's 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 just, it fascinated me that in order, you know, because like all Jedi are, are obviously different, mm-hmm. and we're gonna hear a little bit about some other stuff in this chapter, but you know, again, in order to find his center, he he's got to have his hand on that blade. Mm-hmm. A lot of warriors are like that. They look at their weapon as an extension of themselves. So. For sure. Uh, but, you know, Kip is, uh, is he's considering what to do. You know, he's, uh, 
he's lamenting a little bit about his his Avengers here. You know, he he's basically of the opinion that they're all dead, and and that you know that kind of rattles him. Yeah, you know, that, that that and it would rattle him. You oh, put yeah. together a unit, you're the leader, and you're the only one that escaped. That's that's a tough thing. Um, let's see here. So he does start to kind of. Oh, I thought you were going to say something there. Oh, sorry, just, I'm yawning. Just yawning. I'm okay, tired. fine. It's, it's <laughs> fine. Um, so he is starting to try and figure out a plan here, just what to do. So he doesn't have a canopy. He does have his ion drive. No astromech droid. To have. No, no astromech droid. Um, well, he does have a manual. He does. He <laughs> does have a manual. Um, yeah, which is which is hilarious. He, so he so basically picture this. So you have an X-wing, no canopy, guy in a in space, space suit with a manual, no astromech droid, and you know just like bugs, you know that he's killed, and. <laughs> Yeah, you know, just he has to keep one because he wants to show people. <laughs> exactly. So he actually has it kept so, in the little foil area. So, yeah, he's got one locked in the foil, and he has been able to raise shields, which is which is pretty cool. Which he had to do by rewiring the ion drive yep. from a uh, basic re- operator's <laughs> manual. Right. So uh, kind of kind of ingenious, though. I mean, obviously, yeah. he you know, he knows how to, he knows his way around a ship. Knows his way around, you know, a little, little, little bit of the technology, which is, which is, that's good. Sure. That's good. Uh, you know, he's not necessarily, you know, full panic mode, but he, he you know, he has little options. Um, jumping to hyperspace without a canopy would be pretty dangerous, uh, and the shields are not really full strength. But he does formulate a plan. So he's 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 essentially he's looking at either going back to Lando's or going back to. CERN pedal. <laughs> what do you think? Sure. <laughs> CERN pedal. We've heard that. We've heard that planet name before. Maybe once in or the last twice. chapter. <laughs> <coughs> Might be a target. What? So essentially, you know, he decides that he he's going to go to this this CERN pedal planet. Um, Lando's is a bit far away, and he has to essentially make you know short jumps. He yep. can't just hit the hyperdrive and then just go all the way. And, and again, he doesn't have his astromech to kind of plot things. And he, he's <laughs> to say he's flying casually is uh, is an understatement. So he he does make his first jump, and then <laughs> like everything's getting ready to shut down on him. <laughs> Another thing I do want to add he he's only basically got two hours yep. in this spacesuit. So. Right. You know, although, you know, the shields, you know, he, ha- he has shields up, shields could collapse, his ion drive could stop working. This is this is pretty dire straits here. Although they do mention that he could actually uh, last longer if he true. went into a meditative state. That's true, but in order but to go into a meditative... Exactly. <laughs> so that that's the thing. I mean, he could sit and wait and, and hold out longer, but he's, he's got to go, he's got to get going. I thought this was also kind of funny, too. So, you know, he, he's doing the jumps and... Playing with the controls as one might rock a tired baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that's what's going on with Kip. Um, let, let's hope he makes it. Let's hope hope he makes it. Well, we'll we'll hear more about him at some point. Whether or not he makes it, we'll hear more about Kippy. He's dead. Spoilers. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but anyway, we're we're gonna shift points of view here to to Danny Quee. She is still trapped in the ice planet. Yeah. Big shocker. <laughs> Big. She didn't escape yet. Um, there was a little bit of, of interesting things here. So she's she's basically, she just has a poncho, which is yeah. fantastic. Uh, and she's, I don't know, what, what do you want to call this? Like sort of like a little outlet here or an inlet. Um, she's not cold. There's some creatures around here that are emitting heat. Mm-hmm. Again, this is just a weird, weird very, alien race, man. Weird. They just got all they, here. Here's some, here's some warming creatures. They'll keep you warm. It's like you know what we really need. Oh, we got a creature for that. You yeah, know we, what we, we really need now. Oh, we got a creature for that. Uh, we need to learn the language here. Here's a worm. How? We need to talk across subspace here. Here's a villop. We need to, you know, we need to warm. We need, we need to warm this sh- place. We need starships. Here, they're floating hol- all around our planet. They're, they're everywhere. It's, it's <laughs> great. We have creatures. 
Uh, like see. little cattle <laughs> just floating around the planet. Oh, we can just tame them. Right. Well, we do. We do kind of except for those little. Uh, yeah, the creatures. Little creatures on the X wing. Yeah, we'll get to that here in a second. Um, so we we kind of we kind of again we're starting with Danny and uh, she does start to talk about how you know she met the war coordinator. Uh, what were they calling it? the the Yamask? Is that that how that was yep, pronounced? Yep, the Yamask. And basically, the war coordinator deemed her worthy. You know, it uh, basically you know the description was you know it kind of like grasped her with her with the tentacles and was like drawing her into its little. Squid mouth with its like single single tooth. <laughs> <laughs> it should be scary, but it just it just seems so because they they describe it as like a giant brain with like a little like one little twofer, you know. It just makes you think of like SpongeBob Patrick, <laughs> yeah, with one tooth. I yeah. can't remember what episode it was, but <laughs> I think he's done that a few times. Uh, you can't. Eat. Nothing with one tooth is scary. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it would be scary if we saw it in real life, but uh, but basically it was drawing her in, and it, instead of eating her, it deemed her worthy. So, you know, she's kind of being taken care of. They're kind of leaving her alone. Yeah. Uh, a couple warriors are coming up. Uh, you know, they're bringing her food, some eels, and some potable water. So she's got water and, and eels, which is, which is always fun. Yeah. So they're feeding her, and, uh, you know, that she just, she's just chilling. In this yep. nice little warm spot. Uh, you know, she has been, you know, Degara has, has kind of been talking to her a little bit. Um, and the, the sentiment is, is, you know, he wants her to understand, you know, the glory of the Yuzen Vong and the Pretoria Vong. And it's like, we're so great. And you're going to, you're going to love us. You're going you're gonna to love us. Come you're on. You're going to turn into one of us. Yeah, exactly. One so, of these days we'll explain how that works, but not today. Right. <laughs> But uh, Degara does uh, does come up here uh, to visit a little bit, uh, and you know he basically explains some warriors came against us. Some of your best, apparently, which is <laughs> which is dubious at yeah. best. Uh, they were destroyed with ease, um, and then you know Danny kind of looks at him a little quizzically, and then you doubt our power. And then Danny says, you know. <laughs> She, she's a little slow to pick up here. You've learned our language. And then he's like, you know, come on. I have an earworm. Do you not see this earworm? We have our ways, Danny. You will learn. He says that a lot. Yeah. We have our ways. You will learn. Did you also pick up that later she starts saying that too? Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so they do bring up, however, someone to join her. And he is not worthy. Exactly. But he is not worthy. But he is ego. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we, we, I think we went a little bit back and forth in the previous chapter. I think you thought he was alive and I thought, eh, he's probably dead. Yeah. Uh, he's not. They captured him and, uh, you know, they bring him, they bring him to Danny. And, you know, Danny basically already kind of knows or thinks she knows what's going to happen because when he, when she hears, He's not worthy. She understands that she was judged worthy. And how was she judged worthy? By, like, getting almost eaten by, you know, the, the war coordinator. Yeah. So, <laughs> basically, she's saying that, you know, well, these guys know he's not worthy, so he's going to get eaten. Pretty much. She doesn't share that with him. But, yeah. you know. So. Danny, you dick. <laughs> you could have told him. Well. Hey, there's this big one tooth creature and it's gonna eat you yeah there's this one tooth unworthy. brain thing you know they say you're not worthy so you're probably gonna get eaten maybe we should get out of here um although i don't think he needed that motivation no he was <laughs> al- he was already uh ready to do that and uh this does actually give you a little bit of view and in- into into miko which is kind of interesting um so he's he's he kind of does reanimate a little bit here it's like you know where you know fourth planet and he's like, Starfighters. Helsko system? Star, yeah, yeah, Helsko system. Starfighters, rock like coral skippers, Danny clarified for him. Uh, you know, Degar had, is basically teaching her some of this stuff and, and through the translation. And she says, Rest easy, you're safe now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> safe. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Exactly. And then, you know, so he basically, you know, passes out for an hour or so and then starts up, Oh, coming through the ship. The fourth planet? 
Yes, dummy, it's the fourth planet. The Haleska system? Yes, it's the Haleska system. <laughs> what? Where's my car? Um, but she explains to him, you know, kind of where she's at. Uh, and, and he explains, you know, yeah, you're kind of the reason we came. We were monitoring things, and, and you know, this is why we, we came. Um, it was kind of funny. He's like, he goes to introduce himself. Ah, Miko... Reglia of the dozen and two Avengers, and she's like, of the of the what? You know, it's a uh, squadron what? of a squadron of star star pilots uh, led by Kip Darren. You know, he's Jedi. You know, we're Jedi. Gonna, we're, we're gonna have fifteen members now. We have two. We're 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 Jedi. You're a Jedi Knight. Oh hell yeah! Well, I, I haven't gone through every, but yes. I'm well, a Jedi. you know, he's like, I I trained at the academy under Luke Skywalker himself, and though my training is not yet complete, I've been doing my apprenticeship under the tutelage of Kip Duran. I am indeed a Jedi Knight. He'd Seems probably be a little the, presumptuous. Yeah, he'd probably be the equivalent of a Padawan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about forty years ago. Yeah, I mean, he's he's obviously a little older, but but yeah, I mean, he's he would be essentially a Padawan if we were going by the old rules. But he's like, no, I'm a Jedi Knight. But you know, Danny basically, you know, she kind of, she kind of, she's kind of like, she gets a little starry eyed in the beginning, and she's like, you know what? I can't rely on this guy. This guy, you know, he's he's he might be a Jedi, but I can't. You know, she's seen some stuff now. She's seen, see, she's seen what these guys are doing, and she's kind of trying to tell you know Miko that you know, listen, the, these Yus and Vong are different, and he's like. Well, if this is all they got, we're just going to kill them all. It's like, did you not... Wait, hey, what makes you think that? <laughs> did you not realize that you just got all destroyed? Oh, well, our ships were old and outdated and, and stupid. They found a way to take our shields down. Yeah, he, I think he kind of realized when he said that. He was like, wait a minute. Oh, that's right. They took our shields down. Yeah. So, you know, he's still trying to be a little boisterous, a little little bit confident. But, you know, Danny kind of see because she's already seen. So she already knows sort of what's what's going on here and how scary this enemy is. Um, and then she starts to well, Miko says, "Who are these people? Smugglers?" <laughs> and so Danny laughs. Maybe they, the Yuuzhan <laughs> Vong, were smugglers in their own galaxy. And and Miko says, "Well, uh, he, well, he's startled, I guess." And then she says, "They're not from our galaxy." And he's like, Im- "Impossible! Awesome. Impossible!" A lie they told you to keep you afraid. It's like yes, because you need that lie. That just be seemed, afraid, right? Yeah, now. That just <laughs> n- no. A bunch of mutilated, tattooed guys, you know, just coming up and and you know, bringing up some giant living ship with a brain thing. Yeah, that's not scary enough. No, no. You know what's going to scare me? They're from another galaxy. Yeah. Get out of here. So you know, Miko, he seems to at this point be a little underestimating of his yeah. opponent, and Danny's not because she's already seen it. Uh, she continues to explain, you know, it's like, you know, what are they doing here? The Yusun Vong won it all. She looked at her skeptically. Conquest? The whole galaxy. They're in for a surprise. Or are we? <laughs> and then, you know, he's trying to question her. It's like, how many, how many planets, how, you know, how many comets or asteroids or whatever they might be coming in. Because they'll need 10,000 <laughs> times this number. Yeah, exactly. So he, he's he's uh, considering strength in numbers. Um, now, granted, which is ironic for a Jedi. <laughs> well, granted, they were doing really well in the battle with the Coral Skippers they were. Um, until they got through their shields. You know, yeah. so that that's the problem is once they got through the shields, that it was game over. But if they have their shields, they're pretty formidable. But that's where you know he he kind of has to understand you know sort of how you know how things are looking like. Well, I'm sure that there is a Yuzum Vong creature to, you know. <laughs> Make some shields for the coral skippers. They just haven't and brought it yet. There is, there is. We'll get. To oh that. wow, that doesn't surprise me. Well, the the, the <laughs> that was uh, a joke, but no, no, no. The the um, the war coordinator has the capability of creating a shield around like the planet. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, I mean the I, I think uh, throughout the series they don't really shield the coral skippers. I could be wrong. It's been a while, but I know that they do have some technology for that. It just it just all depends on the scenario. So. They have that. They got that. They've got it. They've got a creature for that. You need it. We got that. So you know, Miko is still being pretty dismissive. We're, we, you know, we're taking him three to one, and we were just flying, you know, star, you know, little starfighters, you know, that are outdated. The aliens, you know, fighters wouldn't stand up against a star destroyer or a battle cruiser. You were winning, <laughs> but you did not. But you did not. 
<laughs> yeah, that that's 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 some wisdom right there. Only because I found a way to took her shoes. Uh, yeah, this is the point. Shoes, uh, and he was like, "Oh, yeah." <laughs> Uh, they've got tools and weapons and technology foreign to our sensibilities. Weapons we might not easily be able to counter. They're confident, and they seem to know us better than we know them. Now, at this point, um, oh, this okay. This yeah, I did want to mention this real quick. So he does get up. He's a little unsteady. You know, Danny's kind of supporting them, and he's like, he gives her a gentle push, like, stop it. I don't want your help. No, and then he does this little little routine of balancing motions. Like when, when I was reading it, I was just, I was picturing him do like a little ballerina routine, yeah. you know, or something <laughs> <laughs> to find his center. They say, they do say finding your center an Quite awful Quite a few lot, times. Don't they? More with him than any other Jedi, actually. Yeah. It's, Even it's Jason. Like, it's like, listen, how many times have you lost your center? Can you just be centered like, can for a Can you just bit? not stay in the center? Can you just be centered? Um, can you stop swerving? Can you stay in the center of your lane? Exactly. But again, you know, this is uh, this is where they're kind of like we've we've got to get out of here. So then we shift to the uh, the point of view of uh, of Degara here. Uh, Degara is having a little conversation with Naminor through the villa. Not very uh, happy, is he? <laughs> well, no. You know the thing is, so Degara is um, he's recounting the battle. You know, we lost more than a dozen. You know, coral skippers. Uh, but we discovered their weakness use, using the Dobbin vassals to counter their blocking energy shields, and the battle turned our way. We can beat them now, one to one, one to ten. <sighs> oh no! Uh, and then the and then Nam, uh, you know how many? Eleven enemies were destroyed. A, tw- a twelfth was forced down, and though two escaped, the Grutch. What, what do we want to call it? Grutch, Grutchins, Grutch. Grut chins, grut chins, butt chins. I don't know. I'll just say grut chins. Grut chins. Oh, sure. That sounds cool. Uh, we're in swift. Pos- that's why. Yeah. Th- so so that that's the name of those those creatures that they let loose. Yep. Um, the spiders. <laughs> yeah. The little, crab spiders. Little crab people. Crab. People. So, um, but they they do say here. You know, uh, Nam's a little skeptical here. They did kind of go through the, these creatures. That they're basically vicious. Now, they can't reproduce um, because they don't have a queen. So, obviously, you know, insectoid. But they're, they're vicious. And they will continue to attack any ship that they find. So, again, Naminor is, is very concerned about discovery. You know, yeah. they, they only have a small force in this galaxy. And, you know, to be honest with you, they could be overtaken. Even even dis- oh, they could easily. even despite the 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 weakness in the shields, they could still be overtaken because of numbers. I mean, the, you, you the just Jedi alone in, could overtake them right now. Right. I mean, you just bring in you know a host of star destroyers or you know battle cruisers. Yeah, they could be taken down. But you know the the thing is is that they still want to be secretive, and you know deploying these creatures out into the galaxy could be a big problem. Yeah, they could be a definitely. big problem. And we don't, you know, they don't have confirmation that Kip was destroyed. That that last ship that got away. Yep. So well, as far as they know, there are two ships that got away. Which uh, of true, course, true, true, true. of course, yeah, the uh, other one didn't no. survive. Uh, let's see here. What else do we, I think we'll we'll skip a little bit. Um, you know, Nam does uh, talk about your new prisoner. You believe him to be a Jedi. He well, is. he does have a lightsaber. Well, you know, he's, he's, he's pretty much a Jedi, sure. Um, you know, Nam, again, he's cautious. Take care with that one. Uh, Degara, you know, he's with the woman. There is no escape. You have begun the breaking. And this is, this is where we're getting interesting. So the breaking. Um, they employ psychological terror. So they're not going to torture you. You know, in the sense of like physical torture, you know, burn you with cigarettes or, you know, knife you or, you know, cut you or whatever. Waterboarding. To them, that'd just be exciting. <laughs> well, to them, oh, it's like, oh, yeah, cut me. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> weird. But anyway, they're, they're interested in psychological terror. So here's the, this, this, again, this is, this is where I wanted to talk to you a little bit about. Who do you, who do you really think they're trying to break? Between the two, who do you think they're trying to break? 
think I don't it, really think they care about Miko. I think they're just trying to prove to Danny how much control they have and what could happen to her if she doesn't side with them. Right. And see, He's honestly, an that's kind of where I'm at, too. Now, they talk about Miko. They are trying to break him to test his limits. Yeah. Obviously, but that's more to learn about the Jedi than true. him personally. Now, they obviously, they release that disease that attacked Mara. Now, they're trying to figure out their mental prowess to see how far they can stretch. But it, it, again, it, like you were saying, I think that they're more testing Danny. Because again, some for some reason, you know, Yaman thought she was worthy. Yep. The war coordinator thought she was worthy. So I think that this is more about her than it is about Miko. I agree. So she's important. Oh, let's see here. Uh, I, I don't know. I think I think the rest of that we've kind of already covered in this uh, this page. You know, again, Nam is is still worried. You know, that those ships that you, you let get away could have, you know, loosed a warning beacon. You know, Degar doesn't really. He doesn't seem very thrilled. Very well. He he just doesn't care. Yeah. He's like, no, they're dead. They're cool. Uh, he does. Uh, so they do start now to talk about the arrival of other ships. So a second sh- uh, warship is set to dock today, and then within another, the week, within a week, another one. <laughs> so again, they're 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 stacking troops. They're stacking troops. Uh, so that that conversation does end. They both seem you know relatively satisfied. You know, Nam's last word: prepare your defenses properly and do not let down your guard. If the New Republic knows of you. Or if either of those fleeing starfighters did escape, you can expect much more formidable opponents within the week. We will be ready. See that you are. So cool. Yeah. You know, Dagara, man, he's he he's he's cool now. Yeah. And then let's flash back to Danny and Miko. The Danny and Miko show. <laughs> uh, so at this point, you know. That they're they're planning their escape. So the whole thing is we didn't really explain this room. So they've got a little, they've got a little I don't know little floor. <laughs> Excuse me, I coughed right in the mic uh, that they're sitting on. You know, the, the, and, I, and I was talking about the the Yuzen Vong sending up some people to bring them food. Well, there's like a little pool. So they they come up, they swim up to the pool and set the stuff down. Right. Yeah. To me, this room kind of reminds me like a horror movie where for some reason the main characters are underwater and they just have to go up for a pocket of air and there's just this little shelf. Yeah. It's always above water and I just picture that. Yeah, I can see that. For this room. Very small. I can see that. Probably not. Well, well, I don't know. This this creature might have lights too. It might have LEDs and it's... <laughs> I imagine they have some lights. I, like I said, they're not trying to... I don't think they're necessarily trying to torture, torture Danny, you know, because she does sort of seem more like a guest of honor than anything else. But yeah, I... I uh, that's the way I kind. I kind of see it like a domed cave, you know, yep. with just a, a lip and the, you know a little bit of room to move. But then you know this pool, and uh, you know when they're when they're coming up, you see a little bubble, you know, a little little bubble, little and then, bubble. Uh, bubbles, so the, bubbles, the bubbles. yeah. So we're getting a little loopy at that. Yeah. We need to eat food. Yeah, we do. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hurry up, Patreon. Get on Patreons. with it. Get on with it. Get on with the long <laughs> chapter. <laughs> so, so a so three. Three Yuzenvong warriors pop up, and then they start their epic struggle. Which I kind of want to talk a little bit about this. Go for it. Um, so this book hasn't done a terrible job explaining the Yuzenvong and how big they are, but uh, there's an actual, it's not quite a book, it's more of a comic, of Darth Maul fighting a Yuzenvong warrior. Darth Maul is a beast, and he's barely able to kill it hand to hand. Well, these I, I, are very menacing creatures. <laughs> I want I want to talk about that after we kind of speed through this a little bit. Sure. Because I I I I have a theory about a little bit of this. So they are kind of struggling, but n- yeah, not as much as you would think, but I'll, yeah. I'll I'll talk about that here in a second. Because Miko does not have his lightsaber in this Correct. situation. Um, that's been taken from Miko's him. taking on one and Danny is taking on another. The warrior uh, who is fighting Danny kind of has her on the ropes a little bit. And the uh, third is just watching. Apparently. Yeah, but, but, you know, he just, she kicks him in the balls and takes his staff and beats him with it. So good job, Danny. Uh, I, I Gives read, him a left and a right and a left and a right. But I read that. I'm like, well, wouldn't he like that? They like pain. <laughs> Maybe he did. Maybe he did. Not to get weird on the podcast, guys, but 
I don't know. They getting, they enjoy pain, so I would think that would just make them fight harder. Getting weird on the podcast. Weird podcast night. Uh, let's see here. So the other two are circling around Miko. We're unworthy, unworthy. I can just see him chanting. Yeah, they're just chanting the entire time. Unworthy, unworthy. <laughs> Why don't you attack at the same time? Well, Why Miko, don't you attack at the same time? Miko finds his center. <laughs> Again, because he lost it in the dome in the 10 minutes since the last time he found it. <laughs> well, I was just standing there in the dome and I lost my center. Yeah, I, I don't really want to read through the whole the whole battle description here. I mean, not that it's... It was actually written pretty good. Yeah, it was a cool battle description. It's just a long one. A lot of jumping and slapping. They, 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 they were doing a lot of yeah, slapping. The, the Did chop, you notice that? The chop. He, I mean, all he I really can, likes that little chop move. All I can think about is like Captain Kirk doing Kirk Fu and like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, just like chopping him in the neck, you know, like the the Gorn. Do you remember that episode where he's fighting the Gorn on that uh, that the reptile looking creature on the Ooh, on the one planet? It was just really roughly. I kind of remember. Well, he, the whole thing he like makes that little cannon with bamboo and shoots him with diamonds or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, doing, like, the flying push kick and, like, the chop to the neck. And, you know, he does the double chop, you know. That's that's just whenever I start hearing, like, slap chops, you know, that's sort of what I think about. So I, I imagine, like, a Captain Kirk-esque battle going on here with horribly disfigured creatures. Yeah. <laughs> with, with neck muscles way too strong to be affected by a neck chop. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> they do get a hold of these, you know, the staffs. And they, they were able to overpower these three right. using Vong. So let's <laughs> so let, let's let's get back to that okay. here in a second. We're gonna talk about it here in a second. Um they do wind up uh taking the what was that called? The the Ugolith um Mascure, the yeah. little suit dealio, yeah. the creature suit, and the little star deals that help them sure. breathe underwater. Yeah, that they, creatures that they really like to talk about uh, <laughs> gory detail. <laughs> Just, one, just shoves its way down your throat. One little oh. thing I want to mention, like, <laughs> while they're preparing to go down this tunnel, the use of Vong keep waking up. Yeah, they, they keep, keep hitting them on the head. It's like, kill them. I'm yeah. sorry. I know this is kind of a kid-friendly book, but kill the use of Vong. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you have the staff. Quit yeah, using the I, blunt end. <laughs> hey, I, I don't know. They're trying to be nice about it, I guess. I guess. Oh, um, let's see here. I'm trying to jump ahead a little bit because I do want to get get through a little bit here. Um, yeah, they swim through water. They're not cold. They, they should be cold. Ooh. Well, she, yeah, she she's, again, the scientist in her. She's like, man, this suit's pretty kind of weird, but it's also kind of cool, man. It's painful, but kind of cool. But they do wind Is up. Is that continuously <laughs> painful or just when it bonds? I think just when it bonds. Okay. Uh, okay, so they do wind up finding a uh, you know another part here, and they come up. And Danny points to a figure in the distance. Who is it? Uh, Qui Gon. It's Tigar. Get out of here, Qui Gon. God, you're he's still alive. <sighs> he's been there from the beginning. Yeah. So anyway, Degar is there waiting for them. Oh, there he. Oh, uh, what was it? Uh, oh, there will be more, Danny. Do Do you see the truth now? Do you understand the futility? Um, but basically, you know, he was, he was, uh, he was waiting for him. So here's my thing. I think that the Yuzen Vong kind of almost let them win. I think this is another part of the psychological torture. I agree. Because it, it, like you said, the Yuzen Vong are, are formidable. And as we get into the, like the real battles and stuff, these guys are killers. They're just, yep. they're just, just death dealers. Yep. They don't really even need weapons. No. Truthfully. And some of well, some of their weapons, not the staffs, but some of their actual weapons are nasty. But anyway, so personally, for me, I think that they allowed them. It was an elaborate ruse to get them here. And you know, again, who does he talk to? Not to Miko, yep. to Danny. That yeah, and he even says it took you longer than I had anticipated. So exactly, and he's got what in his hand? Just waiting there. What does he have in his hand? Oh, he's just got a little weapon, you know. Oh, the yeah, the ball thing and the just, goo. Just the goo that kind of follows you around. <laughs> what Weird the Weird creature. What the heck and did they, they even say anything about the ball thing that flew away afterwards? Because I don't think they did. No, I don't think they did. So, yeah. <laughs> they forgot they wrote that in. L- let me just summarize this in, in the lamest terms possible. It's he, a he, ditto. He, 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 <laughs> no, he, he goos Miko, and then he balls Danny. All right. No, he just throws this ball at Danny. It eventually cracks her one. The goo is 
I, I thought know. the goo chases Danny too. Did they actually talk about the ball? No, yeah, they do. Yeah, okay. that that's what finally incapacitated her. But okay. but yeah, no, the the goo. I think they're both kind of. I don't know how you fight goo, but running from the goo. But it, that jump eventually over gets the goo. Miko. So yeah, let's. I just kind of wanted to jump sort of around. It was just eh, it is what it is. There's goo. There's goo and balls. <laughs> We're in a really weird space right now. Yeah, we need to eat. Um, <laughs> he does also intro- introduce the uh, the prefect of the ship that's coming in. You want to? What do you think about that name? Ma Ma Shred Ma Shred. Okay, yeah. cool. Eh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm guessing though. Well, she's gonna enjoy watching the Yamas devour the unworthy one. I bet she is. Creed. Did you think? You had, or did you believe you had a chance? Yeah, no, they, <laughs> they didn't. So anyway, um, moving on here, we do have a little bit of a gathering of the the Yuzen Vong. Little yeah. little speeches are being told. You know, Danny basically describes it. You know, glory, glory, glory. Yuzen Vong, Pretoria Vong are super awesome. Glory, super cool. We're we're great. We're cool guys. And you know, it apparently went on for hours. Yeah. So not only did uh, did he speak, but then Ma comes up and you know she speaks. Glory, glory. We're super cool. Yuzen Vong, we're gonna kill everybody. We're awesome. Glory and honor to all of you. Glory, glory. Waves <laughs> of energy from you, Ma's glory, glory. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, she, Danny does notice. It's like you know. Not one of them. Not one of them, like, nodded. You know, they were all standing at attention. They're into this, man. This is like 1940s Germany yep. type of stuff here. Um, zealots. Yep. But then, uh, I don't know. Let's, let's just kind of move here to the to the ending part. Um, the curtain comes down. There stood Miko, stuck fast to a post. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the mosque uh, grabs him. With his old tentacles. And, uh, you know, Miko does kind of, he struggles a bit, but then he's like, you know. Eh, yeah, screw it. He understands <laughs> that this is pretty much, there's nothing he can do. And, you know, he kind of, he understands that the creature wants wants him to show fear. He's basically, he's telepathic. That We kind of skipped yep. over that. The whole thing is with the, with the whole speeches, uh, they weren't actually speaking out. Uh, it was telepathically broadcasted. Through the through the war coordinator yep. here, so and it kind of uh, can't pinpoint the exact point in the chapter, but guy makes you wonder if the war co- coordinator can make you think it looks, you know, different than it actually is. Like take on a mm. more terrifying form. Good thought. Yeah, if it's telepathic, it could. Yeah, I mean, in it, theory, it could. Do that. Now, I mean, for That's sure, why I would give itself one tooth though. One Actually, tooth. it has many teeth. Yeah, and it's just the just the one big old tooth. But I mean, it does. Uh, it does. It's 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 probing Miko, and it's it's basically it wants to show wants him to show fear. Uh, Miko here, he had never been afraid of death. He was a Jedi Knight, but something was different here than he had ever foreseen. Some darker sense of dread and emptiness that questioned his very faith. Logically, he knew the source to be the Amosk a trick of the telepathic creature, but logic could not hold against the waves of despair and horror against a certain knowledge that this was the very end of existence. Closer, closer. The mouth open and closed, chewing before the meal had arrived. Closer, closer. 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 <laughs> you see so, what they did there? See what they did? They said, they said the title name in the chapter. You see that? You see what they did? That's the end. That's the end. Roll so, credits. Yeah, roll credits. So that is the end of end of our chapter here. A lot going on. A lot going on. Definitely, that was a great chapter. Honestly. It was a great chapter. We we get to see again more of, more of the Yuzen Vong. We've seen a lot of their technology, but now we're we're kind of seeing their the psychological part of things. Yep. They're 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 not like a brute force. I mean, they are a brute force, but they're they also have they've crafted war in a way that. That our heroes are are not used to. Yep. This is not what the Empire did. I mean, yeah, they used propaganda and, and they were brutal, but this is brutality beyond what we've seen. Yeah, but war is their religion, pretty much. Yeah, you're right. It's a religion more so than just a cause. Yeah, it's almost like Vikings on steroids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's that's yeah, that's a, that's they, a good analogy. Yeah, yeah. They, they definitely have the uh, Valhalla 
mentality for sure for things. So you know, Miko's very in a very precarious situation. We'll see if he survives. What do you think? You think he'll survive? I'm just gonna keep going with he's gonna survive. I kind of feel like he will. <laughs> yeah, I think I, he'll, like I he think will. he'll be around for a few books. I would assume. You know, again, I, I, I that's the point. I don't think they don't want to waste a Jedi. No, there's I think only they're just like a hundred. So. Maybe, maybe the maybe he'll get to go in the mouth, and he's like, "Oh, psych! You were gonna get eaten, but not yet. <laughs> maybe later." Yeah. So, Are oh man, in? oh you will be, you <laughs> will be. You're gonna get tooth, boy. You're gonna get tooth. Hey, look, there are more teeth. <laughs> they're tiny. <laughs> they're tiny. You couldn't see them behind the big tooth. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well. um... You know, guys, we definitely appreciate you stopping by for another for another episode of the Contingency Plan Podcast. Again, if you're interested, uh, make sure you head on over to Facebook, uh, Contingency Plan Podcast on Facebook. Hit the old like button and, uh, hey, send us a message. You know, if you have any, if you want to chat about the chapter or just have a question or a comment or a concern or a theory, uh, that's a great place to send them. Darth Austin, again, he'll take care of you. And uh, Or if you'd like to just send us a big old email, you can send that to tcplanpodcast at gmail.com. And if you'd like to support the podcast a little bit further, head on over to Patreon and, uh, you know, check out some Dinner with the Patron videos. So it's a good time. Patrons yeah. help. Yeah, we're, well, we're <laughs> definitely going to go eat after this and maybe watch some, watch some basketball. The Cavaliers. Cleveland. Cavaliers. Yeah, we're we're Ohioans. We like our Cleveland sports, even though they're sad sometimes. I think we've talked more about Ohio today than any other podcast. <laughs> they're there. It's. I think it's a Jedi mind trick. I think the listeners are playing a Jedi mind trick, trying to find us, and they're reaching out with the Force, trying to find us, and we're just we're falling into the trap. Can't yep. talk about where we're from anymore. Yep. Grab blur some <laughs> stuff out. Now. Yep. Well, I guess we'll give you our social security numbers next week. But but again, guys, thank you and very the routing much. routing numbers for our accounts used for the Disney checks. There you go. That's what they're after. Disney checks. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get any. Anyway, but again, thank you guys for stopping by. We definitely appreciate uh, everybody listening. Um, and yeah, we will see you again next week. And as always, may the force be with you.